Let's keep the energy going. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Give it to me, motherfucker. I'm waiting for you. There it is. Give it up to the Russian comedian, Sarah Dern. from Chicago, but I have never performed on this stage. Um, thank you. <laughs> so I just want to take a minute to take it all in. Christmas flowers. <laughs> Sun spider in St. Louis. <laughs> uh, I kind of laughed when I knew I was going first because I already know that I have the delivery energy of intermission. <laughs> um, I never really know how to dress for shows, but I have been told as a performer you're supposed to look nicer than the audience, unless you're in cats. Um, so this is where I landed, uh, and I think it's, I call it the half, half groomsman. Thank you. Um, I would have done like the white t-shirt, no bra thing, but it wasn't raining on my way here. So I was like, what's the point? Uh, and also wrong show. Uh, I never really understood wet t-shirt contests. Uh, they're never about who has the wettest shirt. Like in the end, no one brings them out and measures the water. Uh, let me start, well, I already started. Let me tell you a little bit, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about myself so you get my vibe. Um, I had 12 gerbils as a kid. <laughs> it was supposed to be two. Uh, we did not know the difference between boys and girls, so we ended up with 12. It would have been 14, but I don't know if you know this, if you don't separate the dad from the babies, he will eat them. So this is how I found out that gerbils have very liberal abortion laws. But just like humans, the men make most of the decisions. I'm just delivering the message. <laughs> Get out and vote for your favorite gerbils if you want to make change. Um, gerbils have very, very loud sex. And I know this because uh, it woke me up a lot while I was trying to rest up for the fifth grade. Um, so I would get up in the middle of the night and I would have to take the gerbil cage and pick it up out of my bedroom and carry it into the bathroom and set it down and shut the door so I could sleep. Um, so I'd like to think that I invented the Mile High Club <laughs> for gerbils. I saw my gynecologist the other day and he waved. <laughs> Uh, and it was just funny because I didn't realize she'd recognize me by my face. I also saw her the other day on purpose. I had an appointment. I wanted her to check and see um, if my ex has left anything at my place. You know what I mean? Um, and she said, no, everything looks great down there. And I said, well, it should. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and I said, I have been remodeling once a week every month since I was 15 years old. <laughs> Tearing down the old wallpaper, redoing the nursery. Um, and that gave me an idea for a TV show. So uh, I, it's for HGTV um, and I pitched it, but I haven't heard back, but no news is good news. Um, so what it would be would be, um, so every, episode is just me running around PMSing and I would be like trying to get out of the mile in PE and crying in car commercials and then the antagonist would be that right when I'm about to start remodeling um, oh I'm the host and the house you know of the whole show so like right when I'm about to begin remodeling a hot guy shows up my door and he wants to come inside <laughs> so then I have to go and say sir sorry please come back in a week It'll be better in a week, things will be all cleaned up. Um, and then he says, okay, and then he pulls his pants up, and then he uh, pretends like he's gonna leave, and then next thing you know, he's running to the back. He's gonna run to the back garage. <clears throat> so then I've gotta beat him. I gotta run to the back garage, and I gotta beat him there. And then I have to stop him and say, 
Sir, you're not that hot. <laughs> but say that I did let you in, enter the back garage. You have to be respectful. You can't just plow through like you're trying to beat the rush hour at the Arby's. <laughs> Next thing you know, you've ripped the canoe off the ceiling. The recycling bins are all over the place. You have to be um, like the suburban dad. You probably know one, or you might be one. And they do this thing where they hang a tennis ball on a string from the ceiling of their garage. And that way they know how to slowly inch in and when to stop, so they're just sort of like. <laughs> um, but in this instance, the tennis ball is just the sound of my voice saying, stop. <laughs> Uh, speaking of things hanging from strings, I want to be as proud of my tampon sizes as men are of their condom sizes. But it's really hard because we name tampons um, like regular, light, plus, super plus, like they're no fun size names. Um, if a guy approached me with a light condom, probably not. Uh, all I'm asking is for Magnum tampons. And I would like them ripped for my pleasure, and I feel like it's not a lot to ask. Um, they also have compact tampons now. Is this a big tampon audience? Great. Okay. <laughs> so they have uh, they have compact ones, which you basically have to like pull apart, and then they snap, and then you whatever. Um, the point is that I often just rip them apart, and so then I'm just sitting in the bathroom stall, like reverse engineering a tampon, and it's like why. <laughs> We don't want people to know how much cotton we can fit in our bodies. Are we afraid someone might confuse us for a Build-A-Bear? Um, tampon brands often advertise uh, using like the word discreet, like where they design discreet tampons. Um, and I just wonder why all of my tampons look like they're about to go clubbing or to an Easter egg hunt. Um, my job for money is I'm a designer. Um, so I have a few ideas. I think flesh-colored wrappers could be nice. Denim wash. <laughs> and then my, the, the idea I like the most is that just one that looks like a finger. <laughs> because then you don't even have to hide it. You can just carry it on the outside. <laughs> you just walk around. <laughs> You don't have to camouflage it. And yeah, you have six fingers now. But that's less embarrassing than being a woman, right? <laughs> um, I want to die alone. Have you seen people die in groups? Um, I, I want to be, I don't want to be presumed dead because they can't locate my body. I want to be found dead because my family needs my Netflix password. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I know who won't be dying alone. That's my neighbors. Um, they won't be dying alone because at Saturday at 10 a.m. they wake me up with their very loud sex. Um, and I know that what I should do is go over there, pick up their cage, take it out of their bedroom, <laughs> carry it into the bathroom and shut the door. But I'm very single. <laughs> so instead I just wake up with them. And I listen. <laughs> and then we all fall asleep together. It's really nice. And we're a thruple now, and someday I'll tell them. Um, anyway, that gave me an idea for a TV show, and I pitched it to Netflix, but I haven't heard back. But. Thank you. All right. No news is good news, so get excited. Um, so I'm just going to pitch it to you guys in case you see it, you'll know it's my big idea. Uh, so, what it would be is it would be like a game show. And we would have one contestant, um, and we put them in an apartment, a studio apartment. 
And then in an adjacent apartment, we'd have couples come in one at a time and have super loud sex and then leave. Um, and at the very end, we pull them out in front of a live studio audience and we just have them sit there and then we say, which one do you think was your parents? Okay, that's all I got. But if you see that show, it's me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Keep going, sorry, sorry, keep going, keep going.